Hey guys, welcome back to another week of the Three Too Many podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brooke Duvel, and I am with just my two besties this week, Carrie Cooper and Erin Clafton. And we are going to do some fun beer tasting later. But before we get into that, Carrie, how is your week going so far? It's going good. It was like a really fun long weekend for the fourth. Um, I worked at the brewery, of course. And then on Sunday, went tubing down the river all day. You were there. We had a great time. Um, oh, that was then... the best minus the, <laughs> minus the river being so low, but that's okay. Yeah. But it was actually kind of nice that the river was slow because we, it was like much easier to navigate. We didn't run into any trees. We didn't have to like dodge a bunch of rapids like we normally do. It was kind of just like a nice chill float. So yeah, that's good. How about you, Brooke? How was the rest of your week? It was fun. I went up to my boyfriend's cabin for the fourth and, um, it was nice to see you and my shins got really sunburned. So that was like the only negative thing. Um, and then just at home, it's been, this week has gone by so fast. I can't believe it's going to be Friday tomorrow when we're recording. So yeah, it's, it's good. I'm excited. I'm just have a chill weekend this weekend. So yeah. How about you, Aaron? Nice. My fourth was a lot of fun. Uh, me and my girlfriend, Kelsey. Whoa. Whoa. It's It's official. (laughs) The G word. Wow. Yeah, it. it's weird. But uh, <laughs> we went to our friend Kristen's house or apartment. They have a pool and uh, we made watermelon margaritas oh, and whoa. drank. And I got really drunk, which was ha- hasn't happened in a while. But, and I grilled some meats um, and we passed out at like 6 30 and we're planning on going only taking like an hour power nap and then go to the fireworks downtown because nashville has like the biggest firework display in the country and oh. brad paisley was playing and we <laughs> didn't set an alarm and woke up at 10 30 <laughs> oh my god you gotta set an alarm yeah. oh, it wow. was rough it was rough, but the I mean, next your day, your girlfriend we... didn't have to wake up to you going like, <gasps> <laughs> and have like the scariest face ever. No, I don't think that happened. I was out cold, uh, but don't the good thing, me. don't touch me. But the good thing about it was that we woke up hella early and we decided to go hike down um, near or this hiking trail called Stone Door and Burgess, no, Greeter Falls. Mm. And so we got to see some waterfalls and see some cool views. So Very nice. Sounds like an all-American weekend. Gosh, it was. <laughs> God bless America, you guys. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday. Yeah, cool. That sounds fun. Cool. Good times all around. I mean, yeah. the three of us have no problem having fun, so... So no. this is great. No. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, it's it's your thing. It's your floor. You've got it. It's all you, Carrie. Take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend we're at the brewery. Oh, great. Okay, I'll put on my bre- I'll put in my brewery voice. Just <laughs> all right. Well, so our topic for this week is craft beer 101. And so obviously I am very excited. So what we're going to really focus on today, you guys, is I had Aaron and Brooke go pick out three beers each that they either haven't tried before, or it's a beer style that they just thought sounded interesting or something they were curious about. So they ventured out to their liquor stores and found three beers they're going to taste today. So I'm just going to kind of take them through how to taste beer, kind of tell them about the beers that they're tasting and they can ask me about craft beer. I have some trivia questions for you guys that we'll do later. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. 
before before we taste any beers though Carrie can you give our listeners a little more background of your beer knowledge and I don't know if you ever discussed your whole is it the Cicerone Cicerone yeah 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 I can talk about that so obviously um got really into craft beer I mean I I would say I really started getting into craft beer when I moved to the Twin Cities of course because they have a bunch of breweries there but I was thinking about it today and I actually think the first tap room I ever went in to like drink a craft beer was Bemidji Brewing when we were in college when they opened up in 2012 um, I had had, you know, of course, Summit EPA, that's still my go-to, like, old reliable craft beer. My dad always drank that, like, when I was in high school, um, and that's still one of my favorite craft beers made by Summit down in St. Paul, and then I, I would say, like, the first IPA beer where I really, that I tasted that I was like, man, I'm like really into craft beer versus, because in college, like, I mean, obviously, when we were out, like, taking shots and like gin and tonics or whatever, but I really was mainly a beer girl, but like cheap beer, you know, like Coors Light, whatever it was. Um, But then I remember my sister came home from Boulder, Colorado, where we just were um, visiting friends. And she was like, we went to this brewery and they had this really good beer called the Hazden Infused IPA. And then I remember like I went to the liquor store and found it that like here in Minnesota and it was really good. And so it kind of just took off from there and started getting really into visiting breweries and obviously in the Twin Cities, they're everywhere. Um, So just got really into it. And then when I moved back up to Bemidji and then after about a year, I saw that Bemidji Brewing was hiring for part-time tap tenders. So I went and applied for that and they hired me And then I just like, per usual, how I do with everything else (laughs) in my life, like dove head first and was just like, okay, this is my life now. I'm obsessed. I work at this brewery. Like it's my world now. Like just got super excited, super enthusiastic. Um, And actually I think I like was interested in getting into Cicerone stuff before I started working at the brewery. So For the listeners, um, the Cicerone certification program is basically like the program you can go through and take levels of certification to demonstrate your beer knowledge. So like for wine, you become like a sommelier. So a Cicerone is for craft beer. And so, yeah, when I started working at Bemidji Brewing, I just kind of became super obsessive about it and got really excited about it and um, decided that I thought I was going to want to go (laughs) and become a certified Cicerone. But um, my life has kind of uh, taken a different course now. So I'm not exactly like going for the official certification anymore. But I had a really awesome opportunity to go to a week long Cicerone boot camp. Um, I got a scholarship from the Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild, um, which is amazing. So shout out to them. Um, Minnesota has a really strong um, craft beer industry. Obviously, the Craft Brewers Guild is really committed to advancing craft beer and supporting independent breweries and the staff there. So I was able to get a scholarship to go to this week long beer boot camp and learned a lot. And yeah, I am a certified beer server, um, which is kind of like the preliminary certification you can get through the certified Cicerone program. So you know your shit. (laughs) I know enough. (laughs) But yeah, it's Carrie and I share a Google calendar. Like I see what she's doing every day just because she's a Scorpio and she has so many (laughs) things she's doing all the time. So years ago I had asked her, I'm like, can you just like send me your Google calendar so I can just like see when you're available. And when she was doing the Cicerone thing, you have like beer study on your calendar, like every Tuesday night or something. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And it's great. And even though I, I'm not super motivated to get like the actual certification anymore, I will say the program, the week long boot camp I went to was an incredible experience. I'm so thankful I had the opportunity to do it. 
learned a lot and like kept all those materials. And I still have like all these books and all these flashcards and all this stuff that I'm still really glad that I have and still refer back to. And it's kind of like how they say creativity is a muscle and you have to work it in order to like stay in that creative mindset. Like I've really noticed that working at the brewery and like working in the craft beer industry, like you really have to stay on top of it or you like forget. Like I remember because of COVID, the brewery shut down. So I didn't work for pretty much a year at the brewery. I mean, besides a few times that we were able to go back or whatever, but, and then I remember when we reopened, like my first couple of shifts, like when customers would come in and ask about the beers, my mind just like went blank. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't even know what to tell you. Like. <laughs> It's like, you would think I knew nothing about beer, but like, it is just another, it's like beer knowledge is very much a muscle and like the way, how quickly the craft beer industry changes and how brewing is always advancing. And, you know, it's exciting to be a part of, and it just, it's always changing. So I try to keep my materials handy and stay reading up on it. I love listening to craft beer podcasts and all that stuff. So so uh, just a side question that I just thought of. Um, mm -hmm. So you've obviously been to a lot of breweries in a lot of different states. What mm -hmm. is what have what things have you noticed like regionally that separate breweries from each other? That is, is there anything great. or is I guess I I probably don't know if I really have noticed because I feel like so many breweries you know, dabble in styles that probably originated in other parts of the country. Like we brew a beer at Bemidji Brewing that is like kind of a classic, like West Coast style IPA or like the style of that IPA really got its start like in California and Oregon or whatever. Um, but that's like one of our flagship beers that we brew in Bemidji, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And same like, you know, at Southern Grist Brewing, one of my favorite breweries in Nashville, um, you know, they'll do like a Northeast IPA. So like, or New England IPA, like a style that really originated on the East coast and just stuff like that. And like so many, I mean, all beer styles really originated, you know, all over the world. And so it really just depends on the brewer at that brewery and what styles he's, he or she is passionate about and what they're trying to experiment with to have on tap. And cool. yeah, it's kind of all over the place. Cool. Well, let's get to drinking. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, you guys. So you have your three glasses, the three beers you got. So very carefully open each one. <laughs> all of them. So at we're the opening same time. each one. Yep. So I'll have you pour all three of them into your glasses. So d oh, maybe shoot. don't. I need a bottle opener. Oh. <laughs> I grabbed one. I was prepared. Nice. So yeah, Brooke, don't, if you don't want to drink the whole thing, like I would just do, you know, whatever you want to do for tasting. Yeah. I'll just do just like a little, a little bit at a time. A little bit. Each one. Shout out to Herkimer. Got I my Herkimer glass. glass. So cute. Missed that place so much. It was in Uptown in Minneapolis. They always had a great craft beer selection at Herkimer. Great craft beers, great cheese curds, just great food all around. Great food. All right, I'm back. Perfect. Gary, I'm trying to pour it like how you pour it. Oh, good job. Yeah, that 45 degree angle, girl. Nailing it. <sighs> all right. I was like stressed when I went to, shout out to Coburn's Liquor in Little Falls. <laughs> But I was like stressed picking out beers. I'm like, I have no idea what the hell to get because I'm not a big beer drinker. And yeah. if I do drink beer, it's like the fanciest beer I'll have is like Blue Moon. <laughs> unless beer. I'm at, unless I go to a brewery, like I go to, I like to go to breweries just because I like the vibe. Mm -hmm. But if I go to a brewery, oh, I'm spilling I'm, everywhere. I always <laughs> request the lightest tasting beer. <laughs> yeah. A lot you that's very common Brooke Mo, a lot of people who go to breweries request the lightest beer on tap <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's great I'm glad I'm not a we love light beer especially in the summertime hell yeah all right what's the what are what are what's our game plan here okay 
So I, I, what I think I'm going to do is have you guys like pick one to start and tell me which mm-hmm. one it is. So Aaron, you go first. What okay, beer do you want to taste first? So my three that I got are Bud Light, Miller Light, and Coors Light. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was that a dumb a joke, joke. Aaron. God dang oh it. Oh my God. But very on brand. <laughs> I'm sure the listeners thought you were serious for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the first one I'm going to try is the um, the Wise Acre Brewing Company's Gotta Get Up to Get Down. Mm-hmm. Um, I hear a lot of people in Nashville talk about this one. I'm not like a big stout person. Okay. So it's a coffee milk stout. Nice. And their can looks really cool if you're watching it on YouTube. It does. So, okay, pause before you take a sip. I want you to like hold the glass under your nose and kind of like swirl the glass around and take a whiff of it. Okay. What does it smell like? Smells like coffee. (laughs) Anything else? and beer (laughs) (laughs) fair enough well so I'm just gonna go on a little segue so when you are going around tasting beers so a good thing to kind of just try to figure out like what you like like tasting beer and figuring out what styles you do like it's a good practice like when you're tasting or smelling to try to really like identify scents based on like other scents, you know, so clearly it's a coffee milk stout. So you're picking up a lot of coffee, but, um, within, with a stout, like there's probably other like dark chocolate aromas or, you know, other flavors or like smells that you've smelled out in the world before, um, that kind of are just like identifiers. So, um, if you like, think about it or if you kind of just sit and think about other smells like whether it's floral or fruity or malty or acidic or you know spicy like that sort of thing like those are tasting notes that you're looking for okay but okay so now go ahead and take a sip out of your mason jar (laughs) Um, I don't know. <laughs> it tastes like, I don't know. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, <laughs> all, I can re- you. <laughs> all I can really, really taste is like coffee. Okay. Like that is cold and like carbonated, I guess. Let me take another sip. Yeah. Really get it in your taste buds yeah it's definitely like a malty or okay. flavor like it like I've had some stouts before that like you can really like taste it's like really sweet this one's mm-hmm. not like too sweet okay that makes sense well that must mean that it's pretty well balanced because with a milk stout that means it's actually brewed with lactose um and lactose is unfermentable so um, it doesn't like, like the flavor, like that milky flavor, like doesn't brew out, I guess is the best way oh. to describe it. So, um, usually that can make stouts be a little smoother or yeah, like creamier, obviously lactose, that kind of milk component to it. So there cool. you go. Awesome. Do you want me to like rate it? Rate it? Sure. Would you sure. have it again? Um, maybe in like the winter. Ooh, yes. I feel like it's more of like a winter drink. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would, I'd probably get this again, to be honest. Cool. It's not like as thick. Like I feel right. like some of them mm-hmm. are so thick that I'm just like, feel like I'm eating my beer. <laughs> this doesn't, this doesn't feel like it. So shout out to Wise Acre. So yeah. I'd give it, Sounds... I'd give it, um, uh, 7.5 out of 10. Awesome. Very well-balanced coffee milk stout. All right, Brooke, which one do you want to try first? Should I do my stout as well, or should I pick a different one? Sure. Yeah. And just, you know, same thing, like kind of just give it, 
hold it under your nose and swirl it around and see what other flavor okay. profiles or aromas you pick up from it. So I have the Excelsior Brewing Company, which is in the Twin Cities area, and it's called Rip Wrap Peanut Butter Cup Scout Stout. Ooh, that sounds Peanut good. Peanut Butter Cup Scout. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to. I don't great. know. All right. Cool. So now I have to do Locked this. It. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Get your nose in there. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like outside. Okay. Yep. Smells peanut buttery. Good. Smells kind of dirty. Okay. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Really that's All right. Earthy tones, Brooke. There you That's go. <laughs> so when I first drink it, I can taste the peanut butter. It's very, it's and like then like the aftertaste butter. is very like, ugh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like beer. I feel like it's like I'm eating something that's like burned, like, mm. like smoky. Yeah, smoky, roasty. That's probably common for a stout. I don't like that. Okay. Well, now you know. Tried it. Now you tried it. All right. But Aaron. I'm sure other people would like it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love like a smoky, roasty. We have a really good stout on tap at the brewery right now, our export stout, which is actually an oatmeal stout. And it's just like, mm, like one glass of it, like Aaron said, it is especially like in the winter time, like mm, so comforting. I don't think it's comforting at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Different strokes. Get Brooke some vodka. That's yeah. comforting. <laughs> yeah. What do they call vodka specialists? Oh, I, that's a good question. Russians. <laughs> <laughs> We're so funny today. Oh, you guys are. It's good to be back, y'all. I know. <laughs> All right, Aaron, which one are you trying next? I'm going to do the Dos Perros from Yazoo Brewing Company here in Nashville. Awesome. Shout out Nashville. So that is a American brown ale. Um, so a couple other things I was going to mention So when you're looking at craft beers, um, some acronyms you might see are ABV, IBU, and SRM. ABV is the alcohol by volume. IBU is international bittering unit. So that tells you how hoppy a beer is. And then there's SRM, which stands for standard reference method. And that just is like the color scale. And so for this American brown ale that Aaron is tasting kind of falls into like that dark amber to black color, um, the perceived bitterness that those IBUs is pretty moderate. So probably ranging between 20 and 30 and then alcohol by volume, you know, I'm not sure which one this is, but it's probably pretty a normal range. So like, which is considered like 4.3 to 6.2. So it's probably you know, pretty average for, you know, there's some beers out there that are like 8.5, 12.3. So this is kind of just middle of the road brown ale. So give it a try, Aaron. Good luck. I'm I'm getting a lot. This one smells sweeter than my gotta get up to get down. Okay. Um, More like gotta get up to get down. More caramelly. Ah, yes. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, it reminds me a little bit of a Northeast. Okay. Yep. That is that the same lane? Pretty close. Yeah. I mean, it's like kind of that middle of the road. It's not as dark as like those stouts you guys just tasted, but obviously it's not like a light pale ale or light lager Budweiser type of a thing. So definitely more malty. Yeah. Kind of right. Kind of right in the middle of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, pretty good. I'd rate it. Um, I'd go 7.5 again. All right. Wow. Aaron's enjoying it. <laughs> All right, Brooke. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> um, next beer I have is another beer out of Minneapolis called Fulton Strawberry Lonely Blonde. 
because Ooh, on the inside, good. I am a lonely blonde. Are you though? No. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm. <laughs> she tried. <laughs> All right. What do you smell? I smell like this is going to be way better than the other one. <laughs> Definitely like light and crisp and like ready for fun. Oh, great. Love your descriptions. Ooh, that's good. That's a 10 out of 10 for me. Oh, good. (laughs) That's so good. It is so smooth. Just like a little hint of strawberry, which I like. I don't really like it when it's, you know, overpowering with flavor. Mm Mm-hmm. That one's good. I'm going to finish that one. Yeah. Well, the Fulton lonely, like, so they're, you know, standard lonely blonde that they've, I'm sure is one of their flagship beers that they've had forever is another one of my like go-to, especially in the cities. Like if you're at a bar or a craft beer bar, like, and they have Fulton lonely blonde on tap, like it is another like all reliable, like it's always good. And yeah, so that um, is like, you know, considered to be an American blonde ale. So again, that like SRM color scale, it's kind of way down, um, on, you know, low end, probably three to six, like really light, you know, perceived bitterness, still pretty moderate. Like it probably wasn't too hoppy for you, Brooke. No, it wasn't. Do you know if the strawberry flavor is seasonal? I would assume so. I mean, yeah. Cause I would love to just get like a whole thing of those. Those are so um, good. Yeah. Well, kind of tastes better, like a seltzer. Yeah. You better stock up. So you have it for the winter. Got to go back to Coburn's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aaron, back to you. Right. What are we having now? Um, so I feel like sours are becoming a very popular beer here in Nashville. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's do a sour. Um, and I got this Rheingeist um, Brewing Company's Glow Fruited Sour. Wow. Um, out of Cincinnati, Ohio. So very cool. shout out Ohio and Zane. <laughs> shout out. Oh, shout out to Zane again. <laughs> <laughs> So this one smells like obviously very fruity. I can't really tell what fruit I'm smelling. You can't identify the fruit. I can't identify. Do you, Um, would you, is it more like a strawberry or like a cranberry, like a darker? Cranberry, definitely cranberry. So a dark fruit. Um, Yeah, it's like a really like pink. It almost looks like a rosé. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I would throw up. I can't do cranberry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> too many vodka I drank crayons. Too or many what? vodka crayons when I was twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Threw up on the side of the road. It was a whole thing. It was. A I also thing. like smell like a lot of piney okay. notes mm-hmm. in it too. So here we go. Trying bottoms it. Up. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Throw your hands up. Okay. It's not as like sour as I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Like I was expecting like airhead sour because I've had some that are like very sour and like for sure make my face cringe. Yeah. But this is a very like easy to drink sour. Mm-hmm. So mm. something about that, obviously sour beers, it's a really broad spectrum. You know, the way they're brewed is all over the place because what makes it sour um, is wild yeast that they add to it. Um And so, and of course, like there's millions, probably not millions, but there's tons of like strains of yeast. And so they each kind of put off a different flavor and it really depends on how long the beer is fermenting with that wild yeast to give it that sour flavor. And so I'm assuming, I don't know, I should have looked it up. I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming the sour that you're drinking is a kettle sour, which means that you know, it fermented in a kettle versus the sour beers that we put out at Bemidji Brewing are always barrel aged. And so it just kind of affects the flavor profile and how the yeast ferments over time in that, you know, kettle tank versus a oak barrel or whatever type of barrel that it is. So I'm guessing the sour profile doesn't become quite as profound or overpowering when it's in that kettle versus when it's aging in a barrel. Okay. I read the description on it Mm -hmm. and it says, 
um, illuminates palettes with a bright blend of acai, prickly pear, and passion fruit. And I definitely oh. can uh, smell like the acai. I was going to say it kind of smelled like blueberry, but I wasn't really yeah, sure. But that's like a and dark, that's passion. in the dark fruit category. So you were close. Yeah. So that's cool. So many nice. different types of yeast. So many. Ugh. I hate the word yeast. I know it is really gross. <laughs> I think there's like, a... <laughs> I don't even mind the word moist. People are so like freaked out about that yeah, word. I, I hate the word yeast. Ugh. Mm-hmm. There's, I can't, I think it's a brewery unless they're just like a brand of like bros who are like really into craft beer. I truly don't know, <laughs> but they call themselves <laughs> yeasty boys. Oh, gross. Like instead of the beastie boys. And I'm like, I don't know who in like, who your like business consultant or like <laughs> whoever told you that, like you should really run with that title. I mean, like no offense to the yeasty boys, but oh God. <laughs> so gross disgusting <laughs> all right brooke what's your last beer that you're gonna try out today all right last but not least and shouts out to our canadian friends ap and rob and that's why i got this one um this is called the moosehead canadian lager and it has Ooh. a cool moose on it i've had that before i think that yeah it's a classic five percent alcohol Let's go. Let's go. Turn up. Product of Canada. Miss you. Yeah. Shout Wish out. your borders were open. I'm sure they drink Moosehead all the time. Smells hoppy. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to like this one too much. <laughs> hoppy and crisp is what I'll say. Also smells like the outside. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, it's really not that bad. Yeah. Pretty light again. Not a lot of like flavor, I don't think. Does it remind you of like a Budweiser? Yeah. 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 Like not a Bud Light, but like a Budweiser. Yeah, like a straight up Budweiser. Bud yeah. Heavy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So Moosehead, obviously it's categorized as a Canadian lager, but it would be very similar to like just a straight up American lager, which is what a Budweiser is. But then like Bud Light and, you know, any of those light lagers are kind of like off on their own style. And that just has to do with the malts that they use. Um, And fun fact about malts. So also when you're looking at beers and looking at kind of like that color spectrum again, malts are roasted the same way, not the same way, but like similarly to like coffee beans. So if you think, if you look at a beer and it's, you know, the lighter it is, the less, the least amount of roasting it's been through versus like Mm. the malts that they're using in those stouts and porters, um, they're roasting them longer and bringing out a lot of like darker, like fuller flavors that it brings to the beer. Yeah. Now that I've had it in my mouth for a little while, definitely very hoppy. Well, not like very hoppy compared to like what you think, but. Yeah. Look, you should have gotten like a IPA, like a very hoppy. I would have hated it. She knows she doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Brooke knows what she likes. I like Tito's she vodka. Too many <laughs> carry. I like Tito's vodka. All right, you guys. Well, out of those three that you each tasted, which one rose to the top? What was your favorite? Strawberry Lonely Blonde by Fulton, of course. I think I'm going to go with it right now. the Dos Peros. Yeah. I think that one, like, it. I, I've had this beer before, mm-hmm. so I kind of was a little bit familiar with it. it. It's been a while, but when I realized it tasted a lot like a Nordeast, I was like, okay, I'm in. Mm-hmm. It brought you back. <laughs> brought me back. <laughs> <laughs> to your That's roots. awesome. My roots. <laughs> All right. Are we doing beer trivia? Oh my gosh. We are. Okay. Are you guys ready? I have four questions and I think, so three of them are multiple choice and one is true or false. All right. Y'all ready? Are your brains ready for some trivs? How, how, how should we ding in? Um, ding, ding. (laughs) <laughs> just say and ding yeah got it just no. ding <laughs> our first one to shout it out yeah first one to shout it out okay so your first question is 
what is the best selling import beer in the U S and so there's A, B, C, or D. So Ding. It, no, wait, no, I have to give you options. Oh, <laughs> A, B, C, or D. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Is it a Corona? Is it B Guinness C Amstel light or D Heineken? Ding. Okay. <laughs> Brooke knows. What Corona. is it? Aaron, do you debate? I'm going to say Guinness. Brooke was right. It is Corona. It is the top selling beer produced by a Mexican brewery. And it's also the best selling non-domestic beer in the United States and the sixth best selling beer overall. Wow. Wow. Go Corona. Go shout, shout out, out to Corona. corona. Not the Always drink it with the lime. <laughs> yeah. You got to have that Corona and lime but not the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What a time. What a year. <laughs> what a year and a half. Y'all remember that? <laughs> All right. Next. Yeah, we specifically didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Also, a uh, shout out to Bemidji Brewing, obviously. Um, I'm drinking their Blood Orange IPA, which is Ooh. our like best selling like seasonal summer beer. And it's so good. And we ran out of it in the tap room, but I did find it in cans in our local liquor stores and it is delicious. Okay, question. And this is another multiple choice. What is dry hopping? Is it adding hops to the beer after fermentation? B, adding hops to the beer before the onset of fermentation. C, using less than one ounce of hops in the brew. Or D, using three or more ounces of hops in the brew. Ding. <laughs> B, adding hops to the beer before the onset of fermentation. Yeah. I'm going to say A. Okay. And you think it's adding hops to the beer after fermentation. Yeah. Okay. The answer was A. Yes. Nice job, Aaron. Dry hopping. <laughs> Dry hopping. Real. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Oh yeah, because we're, we're, we're keeping prize? score. Um, well, I'll buy your next beer next time I see you. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> or I'll send we'll you some Bemidji. Anyway. I'll send you some Bemidji Brewing merch. How about that? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so stocking cap. Oh, who doesn't? You can never have enough. <laughs> yeah, dry hopping is the process of adding hops to the beer, either in the fermenter or the keg after fermentation. And this technique is used to enhance the hoppy aroma and flavor of the beer without increasing the bitterness. Ooh, do you guys do that technique at the brewery? We do, and we actually did um, do it to our New Zealand Pilsner. So oh. Pilsners are obviously like a really light, crisp lager beverage. One of my favorite styles of beer ever. And so dry hopping it. Yeah. It's like, it gives you kind of like that hoppy aroma that like an IPA does, but you're not going to taste it as much. Like when you're drinking it, it doesn't make it taste super hoppy. Hoppy, 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 hoppy. Are you so hoppy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one is true or false. In Germany, children drink kinder beer. Ding. True. True. Hey, you didn't ding. <laughs> I haven't dinged well, the entire time. Well, he's been giving his answer no matter what. Dumb. <laughs> this one's a tie. And you're both right. This. What is kinder beer? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> So this, glad. Yeah. This multi beverage has only the barest trace of alcohol because even in beer loving Germany, beer can't be drunk legally until the age of 16. Contrary to popular belief, it's perfectly legal for children to drink beer in the U.S. Oh, wait. Contrary. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> Sorry. I'm for listeners, I'm reading these trivia cards. Beer. Oh. Oh, I see what they're saying. It's perfectly legal for children to drink beer in the U.S. It's just illegal to sell it to them. What? Like your like if you were at home and Mindy gave you a beer to drink, like you can sit there and drink it at home. That's that's You're not, gonna not get illegal. Arrested. Yeah. 
Huh. So, okay. Wow, but yeah, lied to me then. but they go the extra mile in Germany and brew special little non-alcoholic beers for their kids. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Just like drinking an Odul, Odul's uh, <laughs> at the bar. Start them young. Start them young. <laughs> All right. Last one. Once prohibition ended, what year was home brewing beer legalized in the U.S.? Was it A, 1938, B, 1958, C, 1968, or D, 1978? A. I'm going to say, what were the options again? Basically, (laughs) 38, 58, 68, or 78. Brooke said 38. I'm going to say 58. (laughs) What did you say? Sorry. (laughs) 58. 58. You're both wrong. Oh. It was 1978. Oh, wow. That Dang. took a long time. I know, right? Yeah, it says before prohibition, beer had been brewed in private homes for thousands of years. In fact, even founding fathers, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson enjoyed, enjoyed brewing beer on their, brewing their own suds. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> But everything changed in 1919 when prohibition made the process illegal. Surprisingly, it wasn't until 1978 when President Jimmy Carter signed a bill that created an exemption from taxation for homebrewing that making beer for personal use became legal again. Thank God. for. We need a tiebreaker, though. Oh, shit. Do you have cards? (laughs) Yeah, hold on. I'll go get one. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to beat your ass. Bring it. Bring it. I know all there is to know about beer. Oh, sure. Because you got just as many wrong as I did. <laughs> How many beers did you drink this weekend, Brooke? Um, I didn't drink any beer, I don't think. But I drank a lot of White Claw and a lot of vodka. And I also had a fun drink at one of the like beach bars called Sunset Cove. They made an American flag. Ooh. which was red white and blue nice we I, did you try the watermelon white claw yet yeah i what did you think it's okay yeah i, I drank yeah. quite a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> i like the pineapple one the best oh, i've never had that one All but right. still og grapefruit is where it's at okay for to the tiebreaker. Oh God, here we go. Where is the oldest active brewery in the world? So uh, the- Dub- Ireland, Guinness. Oh God. Okay. Well, that's Aaron's. <laughs> I was gonna you. <laughs> it's it's multiple multiple choice. Choice. Oh, it's a- <laughs> okay. But Ireland, what? Ireland is one of the answers. So Aaron pick C. Brooke. The other options are Switzerland, Germany, or Japan. The oldest still operating brewery in the world i will say germany all right the answer is germany what <laughs> sorry Aaron. Aaron. brooks Trash getting a new bemidji me. brewing beanie uh. <laughs> <laughs> sucks to be you <laughs> it's all right Oops. Ugh, that's okay well you'll get some bemidji merch anyway that's true eventually everybody does <laughs> birthday <laughs> christmas christmas <laughs> it's a great gift shop for sure. all right well i hope you all learned as much about beer as we did today um thank you carrie for um giving us all of your beer knowledge um i think i think we'll be able to go into a brewery now very confidently yeah um and order and a light beer, much more well, much more beer. well equipped to order that light lightest beer they have on tap. <laughs> yes. But like always, guys, uh, follow us on social media. Our Instagram and Twitter and Facebook is all at Three Too Many Pod, um, and subscribe to us wherever you're listening, and leave a comment or um, share this with a friend. You know, spread the love. You know, so. All right, but that is all I've got. I'm rambling. Until next time. All right, all right, all right. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye.